Hello and welcome to West Wales. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I am collecting dye material for natural dyeing. I've got a nice find from a charity shop to add to my fibre arts library. And I'm also talking about spinning in the grease. What is it and why might we do it? But before we go back to the house to discuss that, we're out on a walk. So why don't you join me? We do this walk a lot when I say me, it's me and my little dog Millie and I happen to know that there are some fallen trees here and they are birches and you get a really good dye from birch bark. So I have my little pruning knife with me and I'm going to collect some of this bark. I've been collecting the bark in this little cloth bag that I've sort of got handily hung on the tree and you can see I've just sort of stripped off the, the outer bark. But the inner bark you get a really good colour from. And I was using my little knife, but actually I'm going to change to using my secateurs that I kind of brought along to cut a, a path through because it gets a bit, um, bit overgrown in this woodland and the paths get a bit overgrown. So I actually have some secateurs with me. So I'm probably going to switch to those because my knife was not really doing the job but this I think we're going to be able to get under and just really yeah they're a bit sturdier than the knife was and it's you get the really good dark colour from there you go can you see from that so I'm going to do this for as long as the dog will let me before she gets really bored and wants to walk on so I've stopped here because behind me, I'm going to turn you around and show you this in a minute, we have a fallen birch. But birches are quite often known as phoenix trees because as long as they've got a teeny, teeny bit of bark attaching them to their roots, then they will actually survive. So I'm just going to turn you around and show you what I mean. So this tree blew down a few years ago. I don't know, you probably can't see in amongst all the greenery, but it is still attached to the other side of the bank because there's a little stream here and the other side of the bank is where the roots are and then it fell over and came all the way across the pathway and because it happened in the winter you might have thought it was dead but as you can see it most definitely is not dead so when you are collecting your bark you must be really mindful that you're not collecting off a living tree because that really would kill it but you can see down here that it is most definitely fallen across and very much alive. I'm back from the woods and I'm taking full advantage of the wind <laughs> and the sun and I'm actually drying what I collected outside before it goes in the dehydrator. I'm also drying some marigold flowers and I've been documenting the growing of my dye garden and the first two flowers are now ready to be dried and stored and then when I've got enough, I'll be turning that into some dye. So I'll turn the camera around and just show you what that looks like. I'm using the dehydrator racks and it's going to go into the dehydrator as soon as the sun goes down. later in the afternoon and the bark is all in the dehydrator just dehydrating and I'm probably not going to do any dyeing with that bark for a little while just because I've got so many other projects on the go and I will be following the instructions in this book Wild Colour by Jenny Dean and she basically gives instructions on making dye baths from bark and a little bit further in here she's got a really big section on dyeing with birch so I'm looking forward to doing that but it's that's not going to be for a few weeks. So the other thing I thought I would show you is this pot of <laughs> brown liquid and this is 
ammonia, water and lichen. And I've been really nervous to actually try and dye with it because I've never done it before and it smells really bad. Yes, yeah, so I'm a little bit nervous. So I actually joined a Facebook group that's for mushroom and lichen dyers and I'm getting some instruction off those lovely folks. So that will be an upcoming video because after spending all this time actually extracting the colour, I really do want to actually try and make some dye with it. Oh, excuse me, dog is talking to me. You all right, little one? It's been a really glorious day today. Not so much yesterday, it was really quite wet and windy. So we did an indoor activity and little dog and I went a few miles down the road to one of the local charity shops. Uh, so if you're watching this in the US, that would be like a thrift store or a Goodwill. And we were looking for vintage craft supplies. And we actually didn't find that many, but I am quite excited about what we did find. she came home with from the charity shop was a set of really cute little water glasses and they've got little engraved flowers on them and they're going to be perfect for when we've got family visitors coming in a few weeks time and a book so this is the traditional Guernsey and Jersey knitting book which was published in 1985 and it is full of just wonderful early photographs of people wearing traditional I want to call them fishermen's jumpers really which is or fishermen's um, jerseys guernseys or gansies they are also called gansies as well and this really is I would say it's more of a reference book than anything else there are some patterns in here uh, I do love a bit of social history so this was a real find and it was a bargain price of £1.50 so this is going to be added to my library of fiber arts reference books there is also quite a lot of information about a book that was written in 1955 which was about historic Gansies and Jerseys and Guernseys and I'm going to see if I can track that down. I think it's going to be a little more difficult to find but I am very interested in how knitting fits in with social history and one of the things that I really noticed about this was that there really aren't any records of knitting this type of jumper in Wales and when you look at the historic information that we've got about knitting in Wales, it tends to just talk about hosiery. And I just wonder if that is because of the type of wool that we produced in this country historically, and that it was best for, for stockings and socks and 
Um, and when I say stockings, I mean, I don't kind of mean like silk stockings or nylon stockings. It was knitted stockings that would have been worn with traditional dress, sort of, you know, back to medieval times, really. So that was a good find. Um, not very many knitting supplies or good needles, or I was also looking for another darning mushroom because the dog has chewed mine. <laughs> Uh, but I didn't find any um, but you know I just pop in every so often and I will keep looking okay so what are we talking about today I have my notes so I can vaguely kind of um, keep on track okay so spinning in the grease I am going to have a devil of a job to edit this in some kind of coherent way so I just videoed a whole load of stuff about spinning in the grease and watched it back and basically it didn't make a lot of sense and there is a reason for that it's because I've had hardly any sleep ah. so it's the end of the day I'm very tired and I'm just going to try and re-record what I recorded at home that didn't make any sense so spinning in the grease what is spinning in the grease basically it's spinning raw fleece that has not been washed or scoured so it still contains all the lanolin lanolin being the natural oils that the sheep secrete from its skin helping to keep its coat its fleece waterproof i have spun in the grease i don't spin in the grease and there are some reasons for that when i was first learning to spin i wanted to try all the things so i did some spinning in the grease and if you are just learning to spin really have a go at it because you might get on better than i did with it and one of the big problems with spinning in the grease is that the wool is quite dirty and unless your sheep has been wearing a little sort of cotton jacket and been kind of not outside in the mud it's really difficult to get a really good clean fleece which is what you ideally need for spinning in the grease so why would you spin in the grease? It's very quick because you're not doing any of that fleece preparation that can take a huge amount of time. You don't card it, you don't put it through a drum carder. If you do, your equipment will be absolutely ruined and you will not be able to use it for anything other than using raw fleece on it. And even then it kind of gums up the works. You need a fleece that has been freshly shorn. Otherwise, your lanolin is going to go really, really hard and it becomes virtually impossible to spin in the grease with a fleece that's old. So if you keep your own sheep, it's certainly possible to do because you obviously have more control and you can really select the fleece that you're going to spin. So rather than clipper shearing, you could blade shear because that doesn't go quite so close to the skin. So you don't get so much lanolin, which is obviously what makes the, um, the fleece greasy. So those are all things that you can do. There are also breeds that are better for spinning in the grease. I have tried uh, Hlin because I have access to it, not as good, and Gotland. And Gotland was quite successful. Out of all the things that I tried, Gotland was the most successful. I have seen people trying a really, really fine merino where the fleece has been uber, uber clean and not particularly greasy which you wouldn't normally try that because a uh, merino has in general quite a lot of lanolin but they had a, a really good fleece it was really fine and clean and it didn't have a lot of lanolin and it was successful so those are all things that you have to bear in mind so the reasons it might have been done in the past is because you get a bit of waterproofing so if you are weaving or creating outer garments rather than next to skin garments then potentially you've got a bit of water repellents from the weaving or knitting or, or whatever fabric that you've made out of your stuff that's been spun in the grease so i hope you found that little bit of information helpful really if you've never done it give it a go i don't think there's any reason why you shouldn't just try it you might absolutely love it 
if you're somebody that does spin in the grease and you've got some great tips and kind of reasons that you think other people should spin in the grease, leave them in the comments. Uh, I love getting comments and we've got some fantastic knowledgeable spinners that watch the channel and they do leave brilliant comments. So thank you very much in advance for doing that. Now I'm going to carry on with my walk and hopefully I will see you in a few days time when I'm planning to be making some lip balm. So uh, nothing to do with fibre arts. Anyway, until then, have a wonderful creative time, my friend. We're up above the houses and boy, that view does not get old. I know I show it to you quite a lot, but it's because I love it. So we're really not very far from home. It's about 15 minute walk up the hill. So far, the dog has rolled in fox poo and rolled on a dead vole. So when I get home, I am going to be giving the dog a shower. Not exactly what I had in mind. I am absolutely cream crackered today. I had a really bad night's sleep and I've just watched my video back and I'm going to have to do a lot of editing because I was a bit bad tempered in it and yeah, didn't make a lot of sense. Why might we want to do this? Insanity. I think actually, because I can't think of any good reason why you'd want to do it. So today's topic is spinning in the grease. And is this, today's topic is spinning in the grease. And this is a topic that was requested. Um, not something I do. I did do it to try it when I was a very new spinner and went, yeah, you can keep that. If you're somebody that spins in the grease, please tell me how you do it without it ruining everything and getting everywhere because I did not find it to be a very satisfying experience. You haven't washed it, so it's going to be full of, well, unspeakable things probably. And it's also potentially going to be full of vegetative, ma vegetative, vegetative. Is that even a word? No, that's not a word. Vegetative matter oh, was spinning directly from a freshly shorn sheep. Freshly shorn sheep. It's all, twi it's all tongue twisters today. 